Today on Under the Big Tree, everything old is new again. Prism circuits and the dawn of a new era in Serge Paperface DIY synths. And we are here with Skylar King of Prism Circuits. Skylar is starting a new company that's absolutely wonderful. It's building DIY circuits for old Serge Paperface modules. I am so excited about this, and it's so nice to see you. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, Skylar? Yeah, um, I actually grew up as a musician for my father, um, playing music my entire life from a young child. Everything I started playing drums at the age of four, which eventually turned into playing bass and then guitar. And it was just like this nonstop progression from drums to guitar to bass to piano. And then I actually discovered one of my dad's old synths in the closet, which was a Roland JX3P. Nice. One of my first synths also, actually. And I, I had never seen it because he had never really brought it out before. And so I kind of pulled it out and he got really excited too. Like, oh, like we can learn this together and kind of do cool things like that. And I have never experienced uh, electronic music before or even heard it maybe. Um, so that was kind of like my first dip in my toe in the water of electronics. And then long behold, he had a drum machine too. So like we would just kind of like make little patterns and I would, he would show me a little three note chords and I would just kind of you know, dabble on some notes and that was very intriguing to me because the sounds from playing guitar you sort of reach kind of a limit in a sense um there's only so many sonic capabilities you can reach without using a lot of pedals and stuff if you're just playing through an amp there's only so much you can do but in the synth world uh, i mean sky's the limit yeah, you know, you're tweaking a bunch of these parameters. I didn't know what they meant. I'm just sl flicking sliders and turning knobs, and he had the programmer box with it, so it opened up a whole new world. I'm just turning stuff and going, wow, this is incredible. Like, just peaking interest constantly. And that always stuck with me. Um, it kind of faded for a little while in my teen years, um, but as I got older, I kind of rediscovered it. Um, bought my own since now that I was old enough, you know, and working to buy my own, st my own stuff. So just started collecting drum machines and synths and just getting back into the electronic vibes. Um, did that for years, of course, um, eventually started working in music, um, electronic music, seen modular for the first time, very intriguing, um, and just fell down that rabbit hole, which most people know got into Eurorack, Eurorack led to DIY. I started building my own synths um, and that eventually snowballed into making my own synths, um, experimenting with circuits, breadboarding, making little 4106 oscillators and just experimenting with that and just seeing where it can go. And so that eventually led to this um, route which I have always been inspired by Serge. Um, huge inspiration, especially the Paperface series. Um, to me, it's very cryptic. Um, not much is labeled, which I love. It was a mystery to me. Yeah, it's real, it really encourages exploration, doesn't it? Yes, when things are not labeled and kind of color-coded, it's a really open-ended box of crayons, basically. Just start plugging things in and seeing what happens. There is something so nice about Banana Jacks as opposed to the 3.5 millimeter um, stuff in Eurorack or even the Buchla thing where you have Banana Jacks for control panels, but then you've got his Tiny Jacks for audio. One of the things that I love so much about the Serge modules is it's all just voltage. You can just connect anything to anything. Yes, and that's where I deciphered. I, I mean, I, I love the Buchla stuff. I think it's incredible. But yeah, having audio and CV on two different formatted jacks kind of throws a wrench in your plans um, you can't plug everything into anything which could be good i guess uh, it is what it is and it's known for that which is great but yes having the ability to plug anything into anything feedbacking anything into anything 
uh, really inspired me because then there's really no limits of what can be done. Well, and so that brings you now to, you know, taking it from a hobby to a little bit more of a business. Why don't you tell us what Prism Circuits is all about? Yeah, so I had started originally making Eurorack modules, not under Prism Circuits, but under uh, another name. Got really inspired just by making my own things um, and seeing people use them pretty much. That was what made me really happy is that people loved it and that to me just made me so happy to where I was like, I, I could see myself doing this. Um, the only downfall to making stuff, it takes you away from making music. Um, but to see other people making music with things you've made, it, it really is worth all the effort. It's almost more gratifying to see other people use your stuff. Um, so I did that for a while. It was great. Your rack was cool. I felt like the market got a little flooded you're kind of the cool kid at first and then maybe six months down the road in your rack <laughs> you're, you're nobody so um i kind of put that to the side got back into making music again um yeah and then just eventually started playing uh, one of my friends paper face original systems got extraordinarily inspired by that um just the sound quality once again the cryptic interface um, it just inspired me and it kind of clicked some light bulbs in my head. And then getting into DIY, I built the 7375 system. Really loved that. Yeah, I built, I built it as well. It was, it was part of my entry back into the Serge world. Yeah, because I had fell out of DIY for a while. So I kind of, that was like my new kit to build. I got into DIY again, um, used that for a long time. And I said, well, I maybe I can give it a shot and make my own paper face system and maybe making it actually paper face again, as it was originally. Um, just the grid of holes, empty panels that you can print your own face plates on paper, uh, build the circuits behind the panels and kind of customize your own panels. That's that's really amazing. So so tell us about first of all the history of Paperface and what does that actually mean. So if I'm building some of your stuff, wh what is what does Paperface actually mean? What is it that I'm actually doing? Yeah. So you're actually I'm kind of recreating all these old circuits from the 70s. Um, I know a few people have done them and they're all amazing stuff, but I felt it lacked the originality of what the original system was all about which was customizing your own panels. Um, so getting into this ecosystem that I'm doing, um, all the PCBs will be offered as individual modules. Um, so you would just, you have a 16 panel, 16 hole grid. So pretty much 16 by six. Um, and you can ch pick and choose what modules would fit within the 16 space uh, panel. Some modules are three, some are two, some are one. Uh, something like the programmer could be up to as many as you want. Um, you can do a 16 space programmer if you like, um, totally up to you. But yeah, just trying to bring the originality back, um, all the original circuits, uh, yeah, it's very inspiring to me and I hope it would be inspiring to other people to build their own systems. So, so once uh, I know what it is that I want in my panel, you know, I think we understand about how we actually build the circuit boards and we, you know, populate them. We can get into that in a second. But tell me a little bit more about how you actually create the paper face front. Because I know I've seen some pictures of some old Serge modules that have got beautiful artwork. It's not even, you know, they're just these gorgeous images and things that are on there. So you can really do anything you want, right? So that's 100% up to the customer. I will supply a PDF panel of just the basic white and black lines. Um, they are totally free to import that into Photoshop. You name it. If you want to tie dye it with paint, I mean, you, that is totally up to the customer. But yes, I kind of give you the guidelines of the basic layout. You don't even have to print these if you want. Um, you could leave it blank. It, it's totally up to you. Um, yeah, you can, I mean, you know, your heart's content of what you can do. 
So then the idea would be that you would print out the PDFs and then you would glue them to the panel and then put like some a plastic sheet over it to give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of protection. Is that how it works? Yes, you can either choose to glue them. I use this um, paper that's actually sticky on the back. Oh. Um, so you just put it in your standard home printer, prints out, you peel it off just like a sticker. Um, you line up the holes, uh, yeah, and it sticks right to the front, or you can glue it. Um, it's up to you. And then, yes, I will I will send, I have links on my, my website to the paper and to this plastic coating I use. Um, yeah, so it, it's also just a sticky plastic coating. So once you stick all the paper panels, you put the plastic over, you kind of squeegee it out, get all the bubbles out, and it should be protected mostly against any dirt, water, any wear and tear. Unlike paper, it can get really dirty. Sure. This just will not. That's that's amazing. Um, so why don't you tell us, what are the different circuits that you've developed so far for this whole system? So, yes, I went through the entire... 73 through 75 era um, everything from the oscillators to the filters the envelopes the gates the ring mods um, all the classic circuits a programmer of course the classic um, there will be some modules that are not surge modules that i will offer um, one being a sequential switch and i have some like clock divider modules i'm going to add um, useful. very useful stuff um, and you can kind of get those uh, functions within the system by patching, by some real like deep patching. But it will be nice just to offer a simple clock divider with a clock input and division outputs. Um, I'll have expanders for that. We'll, that'll have inverted outputs. Um, so just trying to expand on this ecosystem. Um, mostly I'm, I'm just highly inspired by the look of the interface. So all my modules I will offer, will they'll just blend right in. You kind of wouldn't even notice them. Um, if you were to look, it just blends right into the ecosystem. Um, so yeah, I think there's about 23 different modules that will be offered. Wow, that's amazing. So everything, yeah, oscillators, filters, noise, and random. Pretty much almost every simple synthesizer function will be available. And hopefully more in the future, I can just work on different modules. So for people new to DIY, are these circuits challenging? And how would you recommend getting started for somebody who's never done this stuff before? A lot of these circuits are very easy to build. Um, you should not be intimidated. Um, the website will have build guides, so it will guide you along the process. Um, there is kind of a certain formula that you should follow. I always recommend starting with the resistors, which is a basic function. <laughs> resistors, capacitors, diodes, uh, and then moving on to the IC sockets if you're gonna use those. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. After that, adding pots. Of course, you'll mount the jacks to the panel and it should just kind of sandwich in nice and clean. Um, but yes, there will be build guides offered on the site. For most of the modules, um, I mean, most of them are very basic. They should just kind of be the same function as far as the order of which things should be placed. Um, but there are a couple modules that require just a little bit more, maybe like match transistors, measuring the gain of transistors, which will all be documented. Um, maybe if you do not have the tools to do that, I'm gonna try to offer uh, properly gain transistors for those modules. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to buy those for me. I'm hoping to have um, rare chips for sale too. Um, it's not that they're rare, it's just sometimes they're kind of hard to track down. You can still find them, but yes, it would just be easier if you could just order boards and the chips at the same time, not sourcing them from a bunch of different places. Right, um, because then you could buy, then you could, you know, just take the mouser bill of materials and use it to be able to download the, you know, to order the really simple, you know, very common parts, which are most of them. And so, yeah, that makes it a lot easier rather than having to go to four different places to be able to find your stuff. Yes. I'm going to try to streamline it for people. I mean, the less places you have to go, the easier for people. I, I know that's a very stressful thing of DIY when someone doesn't have something, you got to go here, you got to go there, you got to Google it and search it around it can become a hassle. So I'm gonna to try to streamline that for, for all the customers. 
Um, one of the things that I think is so important in terms of DIY is, is getting your power situation together. How does the power work on your system behind the scenes? Yeah, so I will also offer um, a power bus board for depending how you want to mount your panels. Um, I will also offer boats, uh, wooden boats, which I have here. Um, I will offer them unpowered and powered. So you could have a turnkey situation. Um, of course, I will offer built panels as well for the people that aren't into DIY. So there's that option as well. I'm hoping to have at least maybe five to six different panels. And I might offer a custom area where people can customize panels and I can build them for them. Of course, that will be a little more expensive and it will take a little more time. Um, but that option might be available because maybe you wouldn't want the exact panel I have. You just want a different module that will be available as well. So let's talk about engineering here a little bit. I was so struck by just how good these things sounded. I mean, there was no noise. You know, there was just the articulation of the oscillators was just absurdly beautiful. So why do they sound so good? What were your design decisions that helped make this happen? Yeah, I spent a lot of time hand routing boards. Um, they're, they're all smooth traces on these PCBs. Um, there's no hard edge cuts. I really tried to use as little vias as possible. Um, everything is kind of a one-to-one -one contact. Of course, there are some vias and modules. There's no way around it. Um, but the, yes, there was a lot of time spent routing a board, unrouting it, moving things, trying to streamline the whole process. It's pretty much the shortest traces as possible. To me, that's like a direct connection um, using thick traces. Um, uh, thick layers of copper when you order the boards is always a good help. I always use a thicker layer when I order, which is a little more expensive, but I think it's worth it in the end. Um, extremely thick power traces, of course. Um, and really just trying to separate ground from power, to me, is a huge thing. Um, a lot of things bleed to ground. So if it's near something, it could cause noise issues, um, especially in power and audio signal stuff. Uh, you might not notice it in an envelope, let's say, but yes, oscillators and filters, things like that. I took special care. I, I've, I probably routed them at least 10 times each. <laughs> well, but the results, you know, the results were absolutely worth it. Um, so, so let me ask you this for, for those people that are new to Serge, what would you recommend as an ideal starting panel? To me, the voice panel I'm going to offer is kind of a, a great starting point. You can actually, so it will be two oscillators. I had two filters in there, but I'm going to cancel one of the filters for a noise source and a random. Um, so it's two oscillators, one filter, one noise and random, envelope, VCA, and a dual mixer. Um, to me, that's like, it, it's a straight synth voice. Um, you can choose to play from a keyboard or you can just choose to route a bunch of feedback stuff. It's kind of like a, a, a plug and play panel. Um, the other panels won't be as plug and play because there'll be more sequencing, utility. So not as much audio stuff going on. It's more just manipulation. So yes, the voice panel to me would be the greatest start. But if you're getting into DIY, the whole point is to choose what you would want. Right. Um, so I will recommend suggestions, but at the end of the day, it's up to the customer to choose what they would like in the panel. If they want three noise sources, cool, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so the cool thing about DIY that I've discovered in building stuff, both your Iraq and Serge, um, is that, you know, you start building confidence and it's really addictive and it's a lot of fun when uh, you create a, a thing that you can then make music with. So I think starting with a voice panel is a really good idea. And then from there, you're going to want to start adding control voltage sources. So maybe a sequencer type panel with some utility stuff is an ideal second, second panel to be able to do. Yes, I would highly recommend like the programmer because um, you want to sequence notes. Um, of course, programmer doesn't have sequence notes. It can sequence anything, filter cut off, um, envelope speeds, uh, you name it. Um, that's why it's modular. It's up to the, the user to determine what things do. But yes, having some note changes would be nice. Um, yes, yeah, so it's up to you. Control voltage stuff, 
programmer is always a great choice. Um, I do like the sequential switch with the programmer because it expands the programmer as far as the amount of steps that can be used. Um, so if you have an eight step, you know, you can times it by two if you wanted or by three. Um, totally up to you. Um, you can kind of use the gate outputs as a gate sequencer too. It's kind of a dual, dual module. Um, but yes, so offering control voltage stuff, um, control voltage processors, things like that would be a great second panel. Um, yeah, I would just recommend yeah more utility stuff in your next panel. You know what's what's so interesting and poetic about Serge stuff. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but um, when Serge first designed these circuits at CalArts in the early '70s, it was because he wanted to create a synthesizer that you know weird art students could actually afford. The more Moog modular stuff was great if you were Wendy Carlos, but it wasn't you know. But uh, if you weren't Rick Wakeman, you didn't probably have the budget to be able yeah. to build something like that. Um, so this notion of DIY is built into the DNA of Serge all the way back to the beginning. So that's a wonderful thing. And I want to ask you a question about that then. So somebody who's new to DIY takes the jump, they start working on it. What happens if they build a circuit and it doesn't work? Yeah, so all the documentation will be there on the website. Um, Getting into DIY, I would, you know, I would hope that you have some kind of knowledge, at least um, how to troubleshoot. Uh, mostly circuits, if, if you place everything properly, um, as long as no traces look bad, it should work. Um, if something doesn't work, go over your work. Make sure there's no caps backwards uh, if they are polarized. Um, just making sure you have nice clean solder joints, no cold joints. Um, yeah, and just kind of going, double checking your work. Um, and if really all else fails, if you've reached the end of the road and you cannot figure it out, send us an email. I mean, we'll, we'll try to help you as much as we can. That's the point is just to be as friendly as possible. Uh, DIY can be scary in that sense because a lot of companies don't offer support on DIY because it is kind of do it yourself don't bug us <laughs> but yes i i want to be as friendly as possible and just helping people build their own systems i mean it, to me it's one of the best things i've ever experienced building my own stuff it's very gratifying when you've created this system or panel what have you at the end of the day when you're using it to make music you're just saying i built this like wow <laughs> Totally. Um, I, I agree. And I love DIY just as much as you. And just, you know, for the record, I've probably built 30, 40 synthesizer modules in my time. And I don't know that any of them have ever, maybe one has just completely not worked to the point where I lost interest and got rid of it. But, um, but most of the time it works really well. The other thing I would add is be sure that you're careful with your resistor values and making sure you're putting the right resistors in the right yes. slots. That is super important. Just go slow. Um, it's not a race to the finish, you know, just pay attention what you, what you're putting in places. Um, the good thing I will offer actually on the site, um, PDFs of the part placements with values. So if for some reason you think you've messed up, um, you can always use your multimeter to probe the resistor uh, and compare it to the website's PDF. That way you can be like, whoa, I, I put the wrong resistor there. So you can always remove it and replace it with the proper value. Yeah. Um, Skylar, I've seen Serge panels on Reverb that are many thousands of dollars. I mean, a ton of them. Can you save money building it yourself? Yeah, to me, that's the whole point of DIY. Um, a lot of people are scared, but I don't think people should be scared. Once you get into it, it, it it's actually pretty simple. Um, and like I said earlier, it's very gratifying to know that you've built this thing. Um, as long as you have the proper tools, having a great soldering iron is key. To me, that's almost the biggest thing of DIY. Maybe some people to get into DIY and, well, I'm just going to go to Home Depot and buy this little pencil soldering iron. That is going to scare you away from DIY. I, I started like that and I was like, I can't do this. But yes, when you buy a quality soldering iron, it is a game changer. 
you realize, oh, I can actually do this. You know, it's not as hard as I thought. Um, quality uh, equipment is key. So quality siren iron, soldering iron, excuse me, um, good solder, having quality tools like a multimeter. If you can afford a decent scope, it's going to get you a long way. But you can get by with a cheap scope, too. Uh, I spent a hundred bucks for my first scope on Craigslist and I still have it and I still use it and it still works just fine. Yeah. So yeah, if you're just adjusting like waveforms and trying to calibrate the sine waves, it's going to get you by. Um, but buying a really nice multimeter will really get you far, especially if it, it can measure RMS and a bunch of other things. You'll be good to go. Skylar, when will these be available? I'm hoping to launch everything by late summer um, of 2021 of 2021. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm really trying to finalize just a little bit more knickknacks. Um, I would say about 95% of the modules are done and ready to go. Um, I just have a, a maybe two or three that need a little tweaking. But other than that, I mean, everything's ready to go. I'm going to place a big order for PCBs um, in the next couple weeks here. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping late summer to get everything launched, of course, photographed, documented. That's, that's going to be a, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah. So once the website's launched, all the contact information will be there, um, email. Um, so you can get in touch with us there. Um, so yeah, it, it's not launched yet. So it's kind of under the radar, but yes, once the website is launched, hundred percent contact information. Uh, Skylar, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share? Um, first of all, thank you for coming um, and, and looking at the system. Um, I want to encourage people to get into DIY. Um, it's not as scary as you think. It, it's a really great hobby, um, and it's going to save you a lot of money in the end. I, like like um, Nick mentioned, panels go for thousands of dollars. You can save thousands of dollars by making them yourselves. So to me, I'm really trying to bring the original philosophy back to the original paper face systems, which, yes, like Nick mentioned, you know, the Buchla systems and the Moog systems were thousands of dollars way out of people's reach. But when DIY comes into play, I mean, people could start building some very large systems over time. And to me, that's the philosophy of the of the paper face era. At least um, I know the later stuff was not as DIY friendly, but that's why I gravitated towards this because I'm a huge DIY person. So I figured if I, I, I could take it in my own hands to kind of give these tools to people, nicely laid out PCBs, very clear to read, very friendly to build. Um, just don't be scared of it. it, it and we'll help you along the way if you need it. Skylar King of Prism Circuits, thank you so much and best of luck with this absolutely awesome project. Thank you, Nick, for stopping by. It was a pleasure.